acknowledging your results with gratitude and generosity. And the affirmation for this principle is, I am deeply thankful for all that I have received, and I enjoy giving to others in the spirit of love and service. This is a very important part, not only of uh, being able to have show up in your life what it is that is the fulfillment of your heart's desire, but it is also a beautiful way to begin living your life every day. There's an old saying that says, if you're not generous when it's hard, you will not be generous when it's easy. And generosity isn't necessarily the um, giving away of what you have, but it's more of an attitude of spirit, as is gratitude. So there are really three components to this eighth principle. The first is gratitude, the second is generosity, and the third is service. Let me take them one at a time here. The first is gratitude, and I remember reading a book a few years back by a friend of mine. His name is Dan Millman. I believe Dan has a program with Nightingale Conrad, a wonderful speaker, and he wrote a book called uh, The Way of the Peaceful Warrior. And in The Way of the Peaceful Warrior, he had this character who was uh, an enlightened kind of being. And in uh, Dan's uh, book, The uh, Way of the Peaceful Warrior, this character's name was Socrates. And Socrates was uh, this fellow who worked in a gas station, but he could do all of these bizarre kinds of things. He could uh, jump up onto a uh, roof 14 feet in the air by just transporting himself. And he had uh, this ability to uh, make himself disappear and to change his shape and do many of the things that most of us, because most of us are cookie thieves, believe somehow that we can't do these things and we know a truth and we are attached to that truth that this is the only dimension there is and there are no other dimensions that I can get involved in or peer into because my senses have told me this and we've come to put an extraordinary amount of faith in these senses which mislead us all the time about reality. So um, Socrates was one of these people who was living in a different dimension, a different level of consciousness. So Socrates tells his student to go out onto a rock and sit until he can think of something important and come back and tell him something important or something significant, I believe it was. And he uh, goes out there, the student goes out there, Dan, he's telling his own story, and he sits there on a rock and he sits there and every time he thinks he's got something that's really important then he thinks about telling Socrates this he realizes how unimportant this is so after sitting there for a long period of time then finally after going to Socrates and telling him things and Socrates says no that's not important back he would go to his rock and he did this two or three times no that's not that's not significant he'd go back to his rock so finally he came and he said something and Socrates said to him you've got it you have discovered something significant. And that something significant was, he said to him, there are no ordinary moments. There are no ordinary moments. And Socrates said, yes, that's significant. That is a great teaching, a great learning. And that's really the essence of gratitude. The essence of gratitude is um, understanding that every moment of your life is something to be grateful for, and that everything that shows up in your life is something that you will want to be expressing a sense of gratitude about. I speak often about how we take things for granted, and taking things for granted is one of the obstacles to having an attitude of gratitude. Taking things for granted very often, I mean, I've often said that I think we should have special days every year in which we appreciate all the different aspects of our being. You know, like we give thanks for our liver on Mondays, you know, on the 3rd of January, Liver Appreciation Day. You know, or just try to imagine what it would be like if you didn't have that liver. There would be nothing for you to imagine. And then 
you know, for the air that we breathe and for the ground that we walk upon and for gravity and for the food that we have and for the sky and for, you know, our eyelids, which we just take for granted. Without them, how difficult it would be for us to get through even an hour of our day and our toenails and, uh, and everything about ourselves to begin to experience a sense of gratitude. Now, when we're talking about affirmations, and we're talking about manifestation, here we want to look at what it is we are asking to have manifested for ourselves. And remember, we are not creating anything, we're just redistributing, if you will. Everything that needs to be created is already in the universe. There's no place to go. I remember when uh, there was, the story was told of, uh, of Swami Muktananda, great spiritual teacher who was dying. And all of his devotees and students gathered around, and he was leaving. And he had announced that. His students were praying with him, and they were pleading with him, Please don't go. Please don't go, Swami. Please, we're not ready for you to leave. And he opened his eye and looked at them and said, Don't be silly. Where could I go? Where is there to go? Everything is already here. And so when you are manifesting and you are asking for things to show up in your life as they begin to show up in your life learning to be grateful for those now that's not so difficult most of us say thank you I have a little ritual that I do every day and that is uh, almost every day God sends money to me in some form particularly when I'm running it happens virtually every day of my life and it's a little game a mental game that I have played with myself I'll be out running and I'll be thinking about all of the abundance that has shown up in my life and how grateful I am and how grateful I am to have my children. One of the things that my wife and I practice regularly is telling our children how fortunate we feel to be their parents, how lucky we are, not how lucky they are to have us as parents, but how, how blessed and how grateful we are. And I'll often pick up my little boy or one of my little girls and just put my arms around and say, you know... I am really lucky to have you. you know, I'm really blessed to have you show up in my life. I feel that way about all my children. And having that kind of attitude is something that I do with everything that has shown up in my life. Because I lived a big hunk of my life without a lot of abundance, with a great deal of scarcity. But even while I was living in scarcity, there was never a sense of uh, poor me, or I wish I had more, or even looking at other people and saying, they've got it and I don't. That attitude keeps you from being grateful for what you have. Even as a child, I didn't learn to say, oh, they've got a Cadillac and I have to, we have to drive around in an old Chevy or something. There was a sort of an internal knowing that you haven't earned a Cadillac. You know, that isn't something that you even think about as being yours. They used to talk about being able to buy a Cadillac when I was a young man, you know, buying my first car, and they said a Cadillac cost uh, almost $4,000. I, I couldn't comprehend a Cadillac costing $4,000 and having $4,000 to buy a car. I mean, it wasn't like something I would even give a moment's notice to. If other people had that, that, that was just their karma or that was their uh, benefits or somehow they had done something to earn that. Now, today, when I go to buy a car, $4,000 is an option. <laughs> you want this stereo system instead of this one? That'll cost 4000 extra. All right, throw it in. What do I do? I you know, it's got extra speakers. I mean, I mean, my first car was an, an old 1950 Plymouth that uh, had... Uh, you know, rusted out sides on it, and, uh, and I washed that thing every day, and I was so proud, of, I was so excited about that. And the idea of looking at somebody else's new car and thinking that there was something wrong here, that they had it and I didn't, couldn't have occurred to me. And I believe it's that attitude of being grateful for whatever shows up in your life that allows additional things to show up in your life. And my little ritual that I play every day when I'm out running is uh, little coins that I find in the street. I found one this morning when I was running before I made this presentation, right out in front of the, uh, of the hotel. A penny, a shiny penny. And you know, I have a, uh, 
I've never admitted this in public before, <laughs> but I have a large jar of coins that is hidden behind in, in a bookcase behind um, a whole. Nobody knows where this is except myself, and this contains all of the money that I have found in the last 20 years, and it's a huge amount of money. Some of it is wrinkled up bills. A lot of it is foreign money because I've run in foreign countries. And most of the coins are dirty and uh, they've been out on the street for a long time. And uh, there's a couple of $20 bills. There's a $100 bill in there. And every time I look at that, that little symbol that just keeps growing, it reminds me to be grateful. And when I pick up one of those coins, I always say, thank you, God, for this symbol of abundance that has shown up in my life. Thank you. And I put it in my pocket and I put it away in a special way. And when I get back to my office, I go to that little place and I put it in there and I look at that. And that's my reminder. What gratitude does is it keeps you connected to that source which brings things into your life. It keeps that connection open.